The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more, do we go into the breach, dear friends. But I don't have a sound to play because I forgot to bring that thing up. And it's going to take a second, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of shuffling, a little bit of sideways action. But here it is. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So up 36 and a half points on the S&P cash. Is that correct? May have stopped. Yep, that is correct. Up 164 on the Dow, NASDAQ's up 138. Uh, of course, uh, pretty decent dip, not a lot of volume on Friday. We've had a fairly decent bounce. Um, the problem is that so far, uh, the volume to the downside uh, is not really any better than the upside. We're starting the show today with about 4 billion shares. I think we had about 4.5 or 4.6 billion shares uh, on Friday when we came into the show. So not a lot of juice on the way on the upside, not a lot of juice on the way on the downside. The dollar may be off 10 cents, but certainly holding the 97 uh, area okay. Gold's uh, off about 8 bucks. Uh, I was wondering what that would look like come Monday uh, and whether or not uh, people were buying gold or silver for weekend hedges these days. Uh, oil up, actually, 73 cents. Uh, but uh, eh, you still have uh, natural gas off almost 9 cents, about 3%. So what are we doing here today? Well, we're into expiration week. We had a huge move today. Uh, so far, the volume hasn't been anything uh, that would say that we'd go uh, break the 2810 level, which is our previous high. Uh, uh, most of the morning uh, had a lot of distribution uh, in some of the, what I would call, the not the top 10 stocks. Um, of course, uh, looked to me like a uh, bear trap on Apple. They drove that one up fairly strongly today, almost 20 million shares. Not enough to get much going on, uh, but up almost a uh, eh, quarter shy of six bucks, 178.65. So option expiration uh, gets everybody going. Uh, as I said, there was always a chance for a little bit higher or a whole lot lower. And uh, I'm uh, listening to some of the people that I follow on Wall Street uh, they're giving the cause of the bounce as uh, a uh, kind of a nod of the hat, uh, a tip of the hat, a uh, little uh, little sting uh, symbol, uh, uh, signal with the nose uh, that the Fed is willing, of course, to uh, turn on the, uh, the uh, turn off the spigot uh, on the selling of bonds, uh, and everybody thinks we're right back to QE four or five or is this QE six? Hard to tell. Uh, but uh, we shall see today and whether or not uh, that hint came from somebody that actually knew something or just people trying to get the market up and distribute stocks. As I said, top 10 stocks, everybody wants to buy in those. Uh, the problem is all the other uh, 6,000 stocks that trade, um, most of them kind of look at least like some kind of distribution uh, to me. So uh, we shall see. Uh, I, we had some selling. The selling at least is abated for the day and even late into last Friday. The question is whether or not what I thought was tax selling is over and they just let those folks sell uh, into the point where they were done and now they pop the market. Um, but we shall see. Um, I'm still short and it's not like it's going to be a big deal one way or the other. Uh, but um, I still, everything kind of points to a market that can't go higher. 
and the chance are much higher, let me put it that way, and a uh, market that could go back to 2650. So uh, the question is whether you sit on your hands and how the end of the day comes up and what the volume looks like. But uh, again, as we've come up to these previous highs, what we found out is um, a lot of turtling, a lot of prairie dogging. They stick their heads out and go right back into their holes. So uh, buy the dips, pretty much last week didn't work. Um, late Friday, it started to. Today, it has continued, uh, but we don't have anything in the way of any kind of breakout volume so far, again, um, 4.1 billion shares as we start the day. Uh, what else do we have going on? Let's do a little history. Then we'll get to charts and we'll see what's going on. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It's nothing but history repeating. And on this day in 2009... The Toyota Motor Company announces on this day in 2009 that it sold over 1 million gas electric hybrid vehicles, vehicles, otherwise known as cars, in the U.S. under its six Toyota and Lexus brands. Uh, the sales were led by Prius, the world's first mass-marketed hybrid car, which was launched in Japan in October 1997 and introduced in America in July 2000. So uh, a lot of people talk about you know, various car manufacturers, BMW, Tesla, uh, in the electric space. I don't think there's anybody who's got more actual uh, units on the road, although it's not a pure EV. And, uh, you know, I was talking to some people about Tesla, real Tesla believer. And, uh, man, um, ew, man, talk about cult members. <laughs> oh, don't bring up. Uh, Prius and uh, in or around anybody with a test, man, that's uh, you might as well be saying you you uh, w w w worship Satan. I didn't know it was so bad to own a Prius. I mean, I I kind of knew that if I actually owned one, I would hate it. Um, slow and all that other stuff, but yeah, who knows? Anyway, uh, what else do we have going on here? Well, we'll look at the rest of it. Uh, catch up on it but uh again kind of hard to actually see uh where we didn't have volume last week we will have it this week and whether or not the uh the uh, movement in what we've seen uh in the last uh, i don't know eight hours seven hours of trading i think that's what we're kind of looking at uh the tlt again still trapped in that 120 to 122 out level and my guess is that we probably just like we couldn't see that thing break below 120, it uh, can't really break above 122. The question is whether or not uh, the market is fixed so badly by the uh, Fed now that we can't get uh, really higher prices or lower prices. Of course, uh, a lot of discussion about uh, Boeing. Uh, it's still off uh, 25 points or 6%. It was down uh, almost 10% earlier in the day. Didn't know whether or not it actually was justified, but uh, kind of interesting. We'll talk about that when we come back. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. Uh, Boeing, of course, uh, lower this morning on a plane crash on the 737-800, sometimes called the 737-8. Um, one of the proven safest uh, planes in a long time. They changed a few things in the avionics, and a lot of people are uh, thinking that they see uh, ghosts in the machine. Uh, Kind of interesting that the crashes are on man, what we call third world uh, airlines, uh, and uh, they may not be maintaining them, the machines, although the, both of these planes in the last three months were relatively new. They may not be uh, training these guys correctly or maintaining everything correctly. At three months, though, probably not a maintenance issue, probably a training issue with the pilot's uh, maybe uh, lost in translation. Uh, anyway, they already got the black boxes and they'll figure it out. Uh, but uh, always kind of interesting to when you have technology uh, and a lot of people believe it should be perfect, uh, especially in aviation. Uh, the FAA or people in the FAA crash uh, investigation unit call it tombstone mentality. And that is generally nothing gets fixed without some dead bodies. And uh, who knows whether there's any problem or not. Uh, by a agreement, uh, when uh, Boeing sells uh, its uh, planes, it gets a copy of any accident, black boxes, both a uh, flight data recorder and the data. Uh, the FAA also agrees to uh, uh, inspect the plane in the crash investigation, both of them right after takeoff and the question is whether or not uh, these pilots probably less of a problem with the, the actual hardware and software, probably more an issue with the pilots themselves and getting an understanding of it. Uh, when I was learning to fly in the mid 80s, actually started in the 70s, never quite completed it because I was in a crash uh, that uh, ended up breaking my arm. But the, uh, when I went back to it in the mid-80s, I think I got my pilot's license in 86. Um, I, said, I had some pretty good uh, people doing my ground school. One guy was a, uh, a uh, 
Air Force officer that was training South Korean pilots and also Vietnam pilots. And he told them that, you know, if there was anything, anything ever went wrong, that, you know, you probably don't want to hit the tree directly straight on. You probably, you know, maybe clip the uh, wing or something. Uh, it may help slow you down if necessary. Well, uh, apparently after that class, about two weeks later, uh, a plane had engine trouble and had to be put down, uh, but not, not like a dog, had to go down. And he said that this pilot went into a field. This field had enough room to land three ways to Sunday, but there were two trees out there in the middle. And the guy went right between the two and ripped the uh, wings off, even though he could have safely um, landed. And uh, they asked him why he did it. Basically, he kind of, it depends on almost cultural issues. Uh, that that was, you know, that if that was something they told, uh, kind of uh, thought that he should do, that that's exactly what he should have done. And uh, actually one of the reasons why you probably don't want to be on a Korean airline They've got uh, four times as many deaths uh, per passenger mile than any other airline on the planet, even Russian ones. Um, and there's a whole lot to doing exactly what you're told in a society and having the ability to adapt when problems actually present themselves. And it may be a cultural issue that actually this ends up being. Uh, what else do we have going on? Anyway, down on tw almost 28 million shares already into a gap higher that had 12.7 million shares. That pretty much tells you you're going to get a uh, a uh, test of this 365 again uh, before you go to much higher prices. So maybe this hangs around expiration at 400 and then comes back down to that 365 area or close to it to test it and then maybe that's the part of the next ABC on the way up. Um, hard to see that there's a big problem since we haven't had reports in the United States, in the United Kingdom, or in Europe, only in uh, Asian speaking countries and uh, making people think it is an issue of lost in translation. Okay, uh, anyway, uh, 2778 on the S&P cash. We'll keep an eye on this volume, 4.2 billion shares. It's not setting the world on fire, but again, um, doesn't really matter if price is the final arbiter in some of these things going on. Okay, so what else do we have? Let's go ahead and start looking through some charts. Uh, again, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648, or you can email me at path at tfnn.com. Atmos Energy AT0. Uh, going in to the November 20th high, that had 425,000 shares. You actually got into it with some decent volume a little while ago, uh, but uh, it's back up there today with 312,000 shares. You wanted something like 1.22 million shares uh, off that December 13th high, too. Uh, but again, just kind of hanging at those highs at 100 bucks. CF, which is CF Industries. Uh, actually pierced a low, one of the first stocks out here that actually looked like a buy on a chart. Too much energy for me, though, off this February 21st high back down to the lows, but a decent test of the December 6th low of $39.44 with 4.3 million shares with this 2.3 million shares on the March 8th low. So you got to buy, but again, uh, too much energy on really on, a lot on the way up. Uh, so a lot of these stocks, stocks just kind of stuck in a trading range. Uh, to do another one is uh, testing its lows is Express EXPR. It's a symbol uh, going into a 4.6 million share December 24th low. Got into it on Friday with 2.6 million shares. I uh, did go uh, a couple pennies below it. Did close above it. A little bit of push back higher. This chart actually is one of the best looking charts in the market. Um, nice slow pullback. Uh, energy was lighter. Uh, significant uh, test of the December 24th low on lighter volume. HE, which is Hawaiian Electric, uh, breaking its high of the December 12th 
$39.35 with a million shares, uh, breaking it today with 256,000 shares so far. Uh, again, a lot of these stocks pushing highs uh, as they had done in the previous few weeks without a lot of juice, uh, going over it and then pulling right back into the trading range, uh, but not that many falling apart just yet. Uh, okay, what do we have? Okay, Helena Troy, H-E-L-E, -E, gapping up on, what is that, July 9th. With, uh, what, 2.1 million shares, got tested on Friday with 200,000 shares. So you got to look at that one. Long-term support at 110. Be back in a bit. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TF and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Um, anyway, we're talking about Helena Troy. Um, actually, not a bad-looking chart back here in support at 110. Bounced right off of it and little or no volume compared to the 2.2 million share pop on uh, July 9th of 2018. It's been tested a few times. Had a nice long move out here and a nice bounce. You know your parameters out here, 108.75. It goes below that. You don't want to be in it. Um, but actually, not a bad looking chart. 145 uh, is a high from back here at December 4th. I don't know if it can get it to it there, but probably 120. 
seems to be something that you could do fairly easily. Uh, we also have uh, Michael's, uh, the craft store, where you can spend lots of money on crafts. Uh, coming out here at uh, 1248 on December 24th, did sell 1.4 million shares, got 1.4 million shares on Friday as you tested it. Um, retail continues to be problematic, although uh, the ETFs show a little bit of string, and uh, that may not be much a difference uh, on that, but maybe lower interest rates or something are going to show up. Penske Automotive Group uh, testing its previous low of February 11th, did so on $41.72 on a million shares, got into it on Friday with 442,000 shares. Got uh, not much going on out here today, but does look like it's found at least a short-term level of support. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have? Okay, uh, Pacira Pharmaceuticals, PCRX, testing its January 4th low, $35.58, 1.7 million shares. Tested it Friday with 732,000 shares, so less than half. Got a nice little bounce out here today. Uh, energy was still too much for me to own this stock from the February 28th high that rolled back over. Uh, but uh, any kind of consolidation of light volume at that level uh, after a week or so might be something uh, to take a look at. P-R-T-Y, which is Party City. Damn, I don't think we have any Party Cities around here in Florida. Had them up when I lived up north in, uh, in Cincinnati. And uh, those were some partying folk up there. Uh, to, to, uh, you had a huge gap uh, or spike lower on November 8th down to $8.24 with 6.5 million shares, into that today with 1.5 million shares. Again, these retail stocks all had energy on the way back down. I don't know if uh, there's any reason to look at them other than the fact that they do have incredibly light volume finally at some lows. Uh, energy coming down is way too much. Renewable Energy Corporation, REGI, Spiking uh, previous lows with 1.75 million shares and uh, 2.15 million shares back on December 24th. Got into it with less than half the volume on a spike, 776,000, and a small bounce given most of it back today. But again, kind of hit some support areas on some of those stocks on Friday and got kind of a rally, uh, but seems very strong what's uh, actually underlying the economy and the stocks, but uh, what the hey. What else are we looking? Someone wants us to look at MU, so we will do that. And uh, Jeff, okay. J-E-F is first. Um, let's do this. Uh, not exactly sure why I'm not getting that. Uh, Jeffrey's Financial Group. Okay. So, well, you went below the previous low. You had some volume when you did it. So, you could. Don't know what he has in the way of puts. He does not say. Looks to me like support comes back in at $17.50. So I don't know if there's much more to say than that. Uh, Start bolt carriers uh, broke through its previous low January 30th. $6.90. Got down to $6.46 on Friday. Little bounce out here, but again... Uh, when you look at the Baltic Dry Index, there's, I don't think there's, I haven't looked at it in a day. Let's go ahead and bring a chart up of that. Um, Baltic Dry Index. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Bloomberg has a nice one. So let's show Bloomberg here today. Uh, ta -ta. Where is it at down here? Come on. Oh, no chart. 
I don't know what they did with it. 645. So it's still in that area. I won't spend a lot of time on it. Um, but still nothing there. So when I look at, well, how did I get that? So I look at that. It continues to make me wonder if there's anything going on. Now, uh, for electric cars, if you thought that there was a shortage of lithium, and of course everybody's been screaming about it for a while, man, do these things other than at the low look horrible. Uh, SQM, which is chemical mining of Chile, uh, back to its previous low. Now, the previous low had uh, 5.3 million shares, and you only got into it on Friday with 880,000 shares. But the energy on the downside was double than the energy on the upside. Uh, you did have a bounce, and it don't have a lot of juice in it yet. And if you want to look at its brethren, which is ALB, uh, it's not back at the lows, but it did get back and fill uh, this gap up from the 21st of February. It had 5 million shares with 1.8 million shares. So at least some level of support. Uh, for the short term, up on incredibly light volume, though, uh, vapor of just 520,000 shares so far today. So eh, probably 8080 gets retested from Friday, I suspect, because you did, did pierce it. Uh, but uh, none of these charts look like everybody and their dogs are going to be buying electric cars or the supply of lithium is much better than people said. And uh, always makes me think of peak oil when that's at. Okay, what else do we have? Let's get that done. Okay, what's well, uh, got a few other stocks to look at as we continue keeping an eye. 2779 on the S&P cash. See if uh, volumes, yeah, we've got 4.4 billion shares. So again, going to be a light day, a relatively light day, um, with, uh, what, uh, an hour and 23 minutes left, maybe 7 billion shares on the day. So not going to be a rising and uh, a rousing endorsement uh, for higher prices, but again, uh, it looks like we're holding them throughout the day, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Okay, what else do we have out here? Oh, we're going to break. We'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. And uh, yes, I still haven't got uh, some lot of requests. So here we're going to have uh, the groove yard of forgotten favorites. Aren't electric cars made from plants and old Ralph Nader stickers? You served me well, hybrid. But still, you burn some gas, and so you disgust me. Wow. Oh. Yes, I still have them. Oh, uh, okay. I'll play that one, too. Ooh, wow. Check out his brand new electric car. That's hot. Like our planet. <laughs> oh, I love him. I love him. Always worth poking fun at a few people. So uh, we're at uh, 2780 on the S&P cash. Doesn't look like we're going to roll over uh, before the end of the day. Uh, does look like this is going to hold. So, well, we'll see. Uh, it's always been the last 30 minutes. Uh, I figure, though, that you probably should have seen uh, a fairly decent-sized pullback by now if this is not going to hold. I don't see a lot of reasons why you wouldn't hold to see how the end of the day comes up if you're short or if you're long, see what actually goes on. But that's it. Um, got a question about NVIDIA. NVIDIA bought Mellanox, which is a, an Israeli chip company. Um, one of the reasons they did this uh, was to help them in their server business and give them the ability to get a business outside of traditional computers uh, also. Uh, Mellanox is a uh, chip, really chip design firm uh, and does pretty well. Again, it was really business. Um, don't it's kind of a tough business to actually figure out what these guys do other than design, whether they're designing and where their chips go in Israel. You probably figure that a lot of it is probably military in uh, one way or another. Uh, so you can continue to keep an eye on it. Um, but I think a lot of people thought that NVIDIA wasn't going to use their money for good and it probably not a bad deal. Now they did out, bid Intel. That makes you t uh, always think that maybe they spent a little bit too much on it. Intel, it just wasn't, I mean, they have all their own uh, part of that business. They didn't need it nearly as bad as NVIDIA, so NVIDIA would pay more. Um, volumes kind of back up here. Uh, and again, one of the reasons why you see the NASDAQ uh, is strong, relatively as strong as it was. But of course, I think that's kind of a one-day deal. The question is how it works long term with NVIDIA. And again, they do too many kind of top secret James Bond things uh, that uh, you can't tell right off the top of your head uh, for defense and design for uh, in, uh, defense uh, chips. So and you just kind of have to keep an eye uh, out here. But, uh, you know, normally if it's a bad deal, the stock will, end, uh, will probably go lower. On the day, this is one of the few times when people shell out $8 billion and the stock actually goes higher. Now, it's not a lot of volume, but it is some. And uh, it's not a negative day, which can tell you also a few things about it. Other uh, 
stocks in this space uh, is Micron. It's up a little bit after kind of a little bit of reversal on Friday. But again, very light volume today, like the rest of the market, up on 18 million shares so far. That's compared to 34 million shares on Friday. So again, not a rise, uh, rousing indict, uh, um, uh, indictment, not an indictment. What am I trying to say? A rousing um, endorsement uh, for it, but you did get a little bit of a bounce out here. Again, I don't think that there's a lot for Micron uh, or NVIDIA in their core businesses to change before probably the end of summer. But we'll take a, a look. Uh, see what else we have out here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. What's Sienna doing here? They have some kind of uh, SEC filing, SEC filing. Blow off top, as best you can say it, March 5th, uh, higher high, blew out all the way back down to 40. It's kind of coming up to that level. You got no volume. Yeah, 41 and a half, 40, you know, if you got 42 or 42.50, that would be very interesting. Let's take a look at the IBB real quick, see how it's doing. Um, a little bounce, too, off of it. You know, you came down, though, on the 6 with uh, 5 million shares, up to date with 1.4 million. Like I said, I, I'm going to say that the top 10 stocks are getting almost all the love in the market uh, and really driving this market. And uh, a lot of the other stocks out here, biotechs, uh, some of the semis, some of that stuff, not getting much in the way of a good hug. Not a bad hair day, but certainly not a hug. Got plenty of times to email me for the last segment or give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, what else do we have? Um, somebody wanted me to look at Netflix. Uh, to yeah. so get down on Friday, didn't do much, popped up today. Well, I can see why you wanted me to look at it. 3.6 million shares compared to the almost 7 million shares on Friday. And you had 6.6 .6 million shares on Thursday. So again, as we were, we were talking, you wanted to see some kind of bounce uh, as these things close below the nine-day moving average, a close above them, and then the next nine-day moving average it's time to pull uh, close below, time to pull the big time trigger. And we may be making those double repo patterns of Joe DiNapoli. Um, maybe not textbook, but certainly close. So uh, I can see what a lot of people are looking at, at here. But for me, it's just the overall lack of energy and the massive lack of energy uh, on any of the stocks that people aren't talking about every five minutes on CNBC. The rest of them. Eh, not getting much in the way of love. Okay, uh, so we had Netflix, a uh, question about Amazon from Jim. The, uh, okay. Yeah, um, for me, the next close below the nine-day moving average uh, for anybody would say that you'd want um, if you get that close the next three days, your target for it would be 1500 bucks. So there is no signal yet, but um, any close below that nine day would say that that is a setup for that $1,500 level. That may happen after options expiration. Okay. Is there anything else going on in Microsoft? Uh, we talked about it with Tom O'Brien on Friday and that they'd announced 800 million users of Windows 10. Uh, this, again, is one of those problems, which is you've been below the nine day for a couple of days. You pop back above it. You don't have much in the way of juice. The next move down below the nine day moving average, uh, if you get it, is where you would find fairly large uh, destruction and price destruction. So far, nothing yet, and no signal yet. But if it does, that is where you find your uh, problem with this thing would probably come back to 99 bucks. We'll be back in a minute. 
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. back uh, 2777 we've been basically flat here for the last hour kind of holding up at these highs wanted to see whether or not we saw anything in the way of volume come in with short uh, squeezes and people giving up at the end of the day uh 4.5 and eh, let's call it 4.6 billion shares yeah you know we had a little over 8 billion shares on the way down last week on the rough days but i don't know if we're going to make 7 billion shares if volume continues the way it is right now. So we will have to keep an eye on what happens. Uh, what else do we have going on here? Let's uh, take a quick look at the dollar. Um, again, off 11 cents, no big deal. $97.15 on the dollar index. And eh, eh. gold's still down $6.70. Silver off almost 4 cents. Platinum up a buck. And 30 cents. Uh, copper still below that magical $3 range. And that tells you that the economy is not overheated and maybe even pulling back a little bit, but not that much. Uh, $2.90.6, uh, which is up uh, four, four tenths of a percent. Uh, our bot gasoline up about two cents. And again, we talked about this last week uh, that there is a small bias. For the next 30 days or so, as they overhaul uh, the uh, uh, the uh, stacks uh, 
for uh, refining petroleum from the winter formula to the formula uh, to the uh, summer formula that normally starts in the first couple of weeks of April, depending on what happens in Kingo all the way to the first week of April. Uh, and of course, without everything sh with everything shut down, sometimes there's a little bit of price gouging and uh, a bit of supply issues. Normally, they pump enough to have it, but they make a little extra money this time of year. And, of course, in the fall when they go back to the winter formula. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.